And does this thing run this fast like that? It's the timing. I don't know how fast it's supposed to run. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, let's start. I gotta right. keep you on here. Today is Tuesday, April 24th, 2012, and we are interviewing Bob Suddeth at the Illinois State Library. Bob Suddeth is 82 years young, having been born on July 8th, 1930. My name is Gwen Harrison, and I'll be the interviewer. Bob Suddeth, could you state for the recording what war and branch of service you served in? World War II. First Marine Division, First Engineer Battalion. Okay. What was your rank? Going in or uh -huh. coming out? Going in and coming out. I went in as a uh, private. Okay. I come out as a Master Sergeant. All right. And where did you serve? I served the last of World War II in Japan, J Japanese occupation, okay. and uh, in Korea. Alrighty. And what was your job, your assignment? I was TAD to an engineer battalion. Um, this goes back an awful long time. I ways. know. Um, I went to Korea in 1949 okay. attached to the 1st Amtrak Battalion, 1st Marines, and then transferred to the Engineer Battalion. As a as a tractor driver, okay. I run um, international TD 18s with ten foot blades. Wow! So <clears throat> you want to get into what? We'll what, get into it. <laughs> I think we first, will. First, I, I went to. Um, I come out of uh, World War II at the end of World War II. Mm -hmm. um, come back to the States, mm -hmm. was activated again mm -hmm. uh, to go to Korea. Okay. And we went to Pusan, Korea mm -hmm. to begin with. Um, then aboard ship to Incheon in September of 1950. Okay. We pushed inland to Seoul. Okay. What I'd done uh, then was to clear roads, clear hills, uh, make roads where roads weren't. Mm -hmm. um, and push our way in to cover <clears throat> the holes that were made by shelling. Okay. And we fought our way to Seoul. Okay. South. Okay. From Seoul, we pushed our way to back to Busan. Okay. From Busan, we pushed our way north again. Okay. Uh, to let's see, I believe I went to Hongdam or Wonsan. I went to Wonsan mm -hmm. uh, during all of the midst of the fightings. When I got to Wonsan, I got R and R. What does that mean? Uh, rest and recreation. Okay. Okay. Um, after the after we took the town over. Okay. I was an engineer and I was part, at that time they were changing from the CBs to engineer battalions. Mm -hmm. And I become part of the first engineer battalion. Okay. All because I come from Peoria, Illinois. Really? <laughs> really. <laughs> I had 
the captain um, by the name of Chuck Dancy. Mm -hmm. And he was the former editor of the Peoria Journal Star. Okay. And he recommended that I take further training on the tractors and a few other heavy equipment, all because they come from Peoria. Wow. <laughs> so then from Wonsan, we went to Hung Nam. Hung Nam, we pushed east to um, Hangari, and then pushed north into the Chosen Reservoir. And we were there, we were surrounded by the Chinese mm -hmm. and we kept wondering why did we why all this mail was coming in and all of the supplies were coming in by air. Mm -hmm. I happened to get a headline from my folks back home mm -hmm. <laughs> that we were the first Marine Division was all surrounded at the frozen I call it the frozen chosen because everyone calls it that. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to fight our way back out again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm one of five of the 1st Marine Division that was originally left of the 1st Marine Division. Okay. Um, wow. And the rest of the people were, that came into the division at uh, Fusong. Well, now I'm wrong. Uh, I got, <clears throat> we got into Hung Nam on Christmas Eve, 1951. Mm -hmm. 1950 or 51, something like that. Mm -hmm. And we boarded ship. I thought I was going to get a good meal, but they found out I was originally trained as an Amtrak driver. Mm -hmm. So I was given an Amtrak to bring the troops out of Hung Nam. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were under heavy shelling at the time mm -hmm. uh, to bring the troops back to the ship. Mm -hmm. So they could be transported south to go to, to various points along the route. Mm -hmm. First Marine Division went back to Busan. Um, I hauled troops from Hung Nam to um, their ship, made five different trips. Mm -hmm. While I was, had one sunk out from under me by a mortar shell. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, I don't think we lost any people, but mm -hmm. I got out by the skin of my teeth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally got aboard ship, mm -hmm. and I did get a meal about 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. A good hot meal. Good. Previous to that time, and from the time we left, <laughs> um, one song, we didn't have a hot meal. Mm -hmm. Wow. And at the uh, at the chosen reservoir, we had nothing but um, summer gear, mm -hmm. wearing uh, summer apparel, mm -hmm. and the weather was forty degrees below zero. Mm -hmm. Um, so oh, <laughs> many are frozen feet. I bet you do. Um, I was one of the lucky ones because I could put my hands on the engine mm -hmm. and my feet on the engine whenever I stopped. Mm -hmm. Of course, we couldn't stop very often. <laughs> no. We were building roads and then they'd turn around and blow them up after us. Wow. Wow on the retreat. Um, Chesty Puller didn't call it a retreat. Uh, he called it a, um, uh, what did he call it? 
retreating in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Who was that? You said that you call it a retreat. Chesty puller. General puller. Chest? Say it one more time. General puller. Okay. Thank you. They always called him Chestic. Chestic. Because he had a big chest. Okay. And he was a little short fellow. <clears throat> um, but he was a he was the best dang general I've ever run into. Hmm. Um, we got back into Busan. We had Christmas dinner aboard ship. Mm -hmm. We were on R and R again for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, the Chinese came down and surrounded the city of Busan. Mm -hmm. um, so we, the decision was made to push back north. Mm -hmm. Um, 1951, okay. and sometime out of Wonsong, um, I got hit. Okay. Uh, the tractor blew out from under me. Mm. A member of the Second Army, so I later found out he was the one that carried me out. Mm -hmm. um, his name was Overton. Mm -hmm. he lived in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and he had his entire buttocks while I was on his shoulder, evidently. Uh, shot away from me. Lord have mercy. Hmm. The Second Army had a motto then at the time, uh, second to none. Mm -hmm. When we got into Kobe, Japan, I was hauled out of the, uh, uh, the Eighth Station Army Hospital mm -hmm. somewhere in Korea mm -hmm. uh, by Dutch airliner to Kobe, Japan. Mm -hmm. I was placed in the 8th Station Army Hospital in Japan, Kobe, Japan. But while they were there, or while we were there, this man was right next to me. Overton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I kept accusing him because I didn't know that he actually brought me out. Mm -hmm. Uh, I owe my life to him. Mm -hmm. um, he brought me out. We were in both side by side in a hospital bed in in Japan, mm -hmm. and I kept accusing him of being second, belonging to the Second Army, second to none, mm -hmm. and. Your good evidence of first run mm -hmm. of what you've got. Mm -hmm. um, had quite a time at the hospital. I bet you do. I got rolling up and I had tubing the hole in my lower groin. Mm -hmm. And after 62 years, I still got it. Okay. Um, but Every year thereafter, while Overton was in the at Bethesda, Maryland, mm -hmm. I, every Christmas I'd go see him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that happened for 20 years. Okay. Um, beautiful guy. Mm. <laughs> and sorry to see him go. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. We may have to see him go. Yeah. About this. It's all right. Okay. I bought that. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I got to hold off this back. <laughs> it's the first time I've really talked about it. Wow. Mm. When I got back to the States, and of course, I was ambulatory. Mm -hmm. Got R&R &R again. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Just going back and forth to visit Bethesda to Maryland. Mm-hmm. Uh, went into the Reserve Corps again. And when I went into the Reserve Corps, um, I couldn't do what was required of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't get back aboard any tractors. Mm-hmm. My profession, if you want to call it that, mm-hmm. um, was gone. Mm-hmm. Um, so they offered me a job with the Toys for Tots. Mm-hmm. Uh, founded with the founder of the Marine Corps Foundation, and I went to went to setting up or helping set up uh, the Toys for Tots organization, mm-hmm. which had already been in progress uh, for three years before me. Mm-hmm. Um, I traveled all over the United States talking to companies, corporations, individuals Mm -hmm. um, about the Toys for Tots program Mm -hmm. and setting up boxes in their places of business. Um, And talking to high school and college people Mm -hmm. about the Marine Corps. Mm. After that, my life was relatively calm. Okay. Wow. What um, a huge beginning. I'm sorry. I said, what a huge beginning. <laughs> yeah. I was only 17. Right. When I first entered down to. Wow. You were a baby. <laughs> I didn't yeah. really know what I got into right. when I first joined. Mm-hmm. Um, the draft was about to get me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I said, no way is the draft going to get me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I run away and joined the Marine Corps. There you go. Uh, that's an interesting story in itself. Okay. Um, I worked for an uncle of mine. And about every night, he'd call me into the office and say, what happened out on the job today? And I said, what do you want me to do, squeal on myself? (laughs) And he'd hand me my paycheck. And I kept it for, well, as a matter of fact, I still got all the checks he gave me. Wow. And he can't balance his books (laughs) because of me. Oh, okay, okay. But... um, while I was overseas, uh, the FBI or the draft board or whatever uh, came looking for me at my father's and mother's home. Mm-hmm. They said, well, we don't know where he's at. And I fired the letter back home and I said, please just tell them where I'm at and mm-hmm. tell them to come and get me. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to come back home. Yeah, yeah. Um, and right after I come back home, my uncle sat on the, uh, at Caterpillar Tractor Company because I had worked there when I came home. Mm-hmm. And when I came home, he was sitting there every morning, I'd go to work mm-hmm. and he'd be sitting on a stool or on a bench outside of the uh, building offering me uh, to eventually I become uh, the owner of the company and he'd make a supervisor out of me and he uh, no thanks mm-hmm. <laughs> and he finally talked me into going to work again okay. the same thing happened uh, He'd call me in the office at 4 30 in the afternoon mm-hmm. and he'd say, Well, Bob, uh, what went on on the job today? Uh, we'll back into this again. Mm-hmm. And so here's your paycheck. So that 
I was a young do that. Mm -hmm. I, I went back home and I said mm -hmm. I was going to go back to the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And I went back when I went back to the Marine Corps. My dad asked me why. And my uncle was my mother's brother. Okay. And they accused me of being lazy and not mm. doing this and not doing that. Mm -hmm. And what happened, I said, I just went outside, caught a bus, and went uptown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Corps had a job for me. Good. And I said, I took it. There you go. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't a favorite son after that. You were not? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's about all I can tell you. Well, I've got life. more questions. Um, uh, did you see combat? Oh, yes. yes. I saw a lot of it. Okay. Um, were there casualties in your unit? Uh, yes, there were. Okay. Quite a number of casualties. Okay. And I think you've already answered this question. Did you sustain any injuries? I think you just yes, told me you did. Yes. Um, were, you weren't a prisoner of war then, were you? No, uh, come very close to being a prisoner of war, but no, okay. But with all the with all the bullets flying around and hitting my ten inch blade, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as a tractor driver or a bulldozer driver, um, we had a ten foot blade in front of us. Mm -hmm. Um, that prevented us from getting hit, but it didn't do us any good really because we carried a rifle. We had a 45 on one side. I personally had a 38 on the other side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with both feet and both hands and an elbow. Mm -hmm. uh, I was pretty busy. I couldn't fire. Right, right. Um, so I could only go downhill in fifth gear, in fifth gear mm -hmm. at five miles an hour. Wow. <laughs> and I had the Chinese when they come in from uh, from the chosen reservoir. Mm -hmm. They were running side by side with me and trying to hit me. Mm -hmm. Mm. They weren't successful, were they? No. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, but with the time that I got hit, I was cleaning off the side of a hill. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet I run over that landmine a dozen times. Wow. And so I must have run over it. The dozen and thirteenth time. Yeah. I hit it. Okay. Okay. And I never saw the tractor after that. Wow. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's when I was carried out. Okay. Okay. By Overton, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. By Sergeant Overton. Sergeant Overton. Um, were you awarded any medals or citations? Yes, I was. A, I was awarded the Bronze Star. Okay. Uh, Silver Star, okay. Purple Heart. Okay, all righty. That was the only three of us awarded. That's quite impressive <laughs> to me. Well, um, maybe to you. Yeah. But I don't think I deserved any of them. Oh, wow. Um, can you share any battle planning with us? Do you know? The places that I was in. Um, I was either forward of the line mm -hmm. or back of the line. Okay, okay. Um, I've seen many different screamishes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen battles, mm -hmm. but I was either forward or, or in back. back. Okay, okay. The forward that I was in front of the lines. I had, I saw some, mm -hmm. 
uh, but not all that many. Okay. Um, I was too busy building a road or cleaning off a hill. Okay. Or going up a hill or coming down. Okay. Um, and I saw many, many of the guys uh, firing their rifles. The only close time I come was with, um, with when the, I was going downhill on the retreat. Mm -hmm. um, again, because of the Second Army, um, that I had the Chinese running on my side. Mm -hmm. I think the only way I got away from them was because they had frozen, frozen feet. And you okay. could see the eyes caked on his, wow. on their feet. And their eyes were as glassy mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. because they carried a a, a pouch mm -hmm. on their belt line mm -hmm. uh, full of opium. Oh wow! Oh, so they were. And we got to witness that. Wow! Um, uh, when I got back to Hunnam, I think it was. Mm -hmm. But I've been from one end of the island to the other, yeah. and I saw much, a lot of fighting. I bet. Uh, but I was either forward or okay. in back. Okay. Mm. Um, how did you get along? These are personal questions with the officers and fellow soldiers. Got along real well with them. Good. Good. Probably because. I've always had a um, personality that. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> and I got along with everybody. There you go. There you go. Um, I think this is speaks for itself. Did you feel pressure, stress, or anxiety? Uh, sometimes. Okay. Um, I felt that I had a job to do, and I just went and done it. Okay. Um, the quicker it was done, the, I figured the quicker it was done, the better off I was going to be. Sure, sure. I get back home a whole lot sooner. Mm -hmm. uh, that wasn't the case, but I had a lot of fun in believing it. Sure. Okay. Um, other than that, it's. I think about it all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I have a lot of stress over it. Sure. Uh, a lot of depression. Sure. Uh, I think of incidents that I've seen. Sure. And mm. it depends. I get choked up every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really like to discuss the things that I've seen and done. Sure. Um, it's it's still a painful thing after all these after years. After all these years. Um, I still have remembrances mm -hmm. of my friends, mm -hmm. my buddies, because we always fought back to back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, I often think of them. Yes. I often think that everyone, everyone is dead now, mm -hmm. and why not me? Mm -hmm. And I've had that feeling for many years, mm -hmm. but the good Lord has been on my side. Yes, uh, I thank Him a great deal mm -hmm. every morning that I get out of bed put my feet on the floor. Yes. Uh, I stay very busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, since, well, for the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, I belong to several um, veterans organizations. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, there were only seven of them. Okay. Um, the main one was the BFW. Mm -hmm. I worked my way through the chairs. Mm -hmm. um, I finally wound up as an inspector. 
Okay. And that was right up my alley because sure. I visited all the commanders. Okay, that's how you probably knew my father-in-law. Yeah, that's exactly how mm -hmm. I knew. Mm -hmm. uh, I had I had a lot of fun with them. Uh, right. Because we can we can talk about ourselves. Right. We can take our tie off, mm -hmm. so to speak. Right. And have our talks. Um, i done that for about three or four years. Okay. Then I become a commander of a post, mm -hmm. a young Creep Corps, for one year. And at the same time, I was elected as a commander of the DAV. So I held two commands in okay. one, in mm -hmm. one, at a period of one year. I've been a commander since 2004 okay. uh, with the DAV in, in Peoria. And I ran into so many people. I bet. I bet. Everywhere I go, I run into a lot of people such as As myself. My father. Her father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. And I run the entire state of Oklahoma. Sure. Mm -hmm. We have one place or another. I'm also the chairman of the POWMIA, mm -hmm. Department of Defense. Okay. And I deal with a lot of people um, were still hunting for 53,000 people. Mm. Mm. Um, although I haven't been asked, uh, there is four excursions that go overseas mm -hmm. um, from various parts of the country. Mm -hmm. They're composed of ten men, mm -hmm. and they got or seeing uh, people, and they got all kinds of people that go with us. Mm -hmm. um, my only job was that when they came back when they from overseas wherever they were at, mm -hmm. they leave four times a year. Mm -hmm. Usually that's in uh, July, August, September, and October. Mm -hmm. um, when they come back, then I talk to them and gather statistics. Um, they reported in the, the Department of Defense, the Department of Defense reports it to guys like me. Mm -hmm. Um, thank God for computers. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, I deal with people daily. Sure, sure. Yeah. If I'm not got a job to do, I don't think I'd live very long. Right. You got to stay busy. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I like people. Sure. And I, sure. I go to banquets and uh, this is what sometimes depresses me. I think about all these guys that I was with right. many years ago right. and I know that they can't do it. Mm -hmm. I make it a point to go in and talk to uh, the veterans at the nursing homes. Sure. Um, I do that once a month mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or whenever there's a man that needs help. Okay. I'm always there. Wow. Uh, if I can't do him any good, then I refer him to another man that can. Okay. I attend a lot of funerals. Yes. And it's people that I don't know. Okay. Okay. But I'm on a burial detail. Mm hmm And I like to get out and uh, Honor them. Yes. Some I know, some I don't know. Yes. But they're all heroes. That's right. And I've often said that if there's a chance, I I, I would go back. Okay. But I'm too old. Right. 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 
I can just barely get around the hallway. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I make an in, I, I make a good effort. Yes, I you do. I do a pretty good job. Yes, you do. And I have a pretty good bunch of people that's that support behind me, you. right? And support me, right? Um, I can't say enough about some of them. Yes. As a matter of fact, I got three of them that here. We could just come off of uh, the O'Brien Field, um, the baseball team that's in Peoria. Okay. Chiefs. Yeah, they're called the Chiefs. Okay. Uh, we didn't get to see the ball game because we had to come down here. Oh, okay. Uh, but they, I have a, a beautiful honor guard. Okay. And this is the first year that I let them go out on the field by themselves. Okay. Uh, okay. I stood back. And Watch them. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, did you keep a personal diary when you were overseas? I did for a long time. Okay. Uh, but I was told when I was brought back to the States, mm -hmm. I tried to find my sea bag. Mm -hmm. um, and they told me, well, it was in Carson City, mm. uh, uh, Colorado. Mm. I went to Carson City to find it. Mm -hmm. Diary and personal things like a watch. And, uh, I had a lot of things there that I wanted to save and keep. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I looked at one warehouse, and if I looked at one, I looked at it. A half a dozen warehouses, mm -hmm. they were all stacked from floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm. And I went through maybe about one quarter, mm -hmm. maybe less, mm -hmm. looking at sea bags. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the names were on it. I know my name was on two sides and mm -hmm. on the bottom. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't find them, and I only had about two or three days mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. and like looking for a needle in a haystack. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. but offhand, I thought, well, maybe somebody picked them up. Sure. Uh, but just recently, I was at a Marine Corps um, League meeting, and. Chuck Dancy, the man that I was talking about, uh, he's now, or he, he retired as a full colonel mm -hmm. uh, and still living. Mm -hmm. And I got the chance to sit down and talk to Chuck. Mm -hmm. And he told me that the sea bags were gone. Okay. They sexed them out in the middle of the, of the ocean somewhere. Wow. wow. Or burnt them up. Yeah. Uh, so I lost everything. Okay. Okay. As many of us did. Um, you, were you able to stay in touch with your family? I'm sorry? Were you able to stay in touch with your family when you were overseas? Uh, that's something that we didn't write about. Okay. When I went into um, the H Station Army Hospital, I did not tell them, and I told them that I didn't want my mother and father to know that I was injured. Okay. Um, but everything was pretty lax then. Okay, okay. And I got my wish. Wow. Until <laughs> I got mm -hmm. I got to be ambulatory mm -hmm. after 18 months. Okay. When I got to be ambulatory, the chaplain says either and or. Mm -hmm. uh, if I did if if I didn't call them mm -hmm. or talk to them. Um, then they would. Who they were was probably the officers or a team of officers. Mm -hmm. um, so I made a phone call at home to home. Okay. I talked to my father first. Okay. Um, before that, I got all this. I got everything that was wrong with me. I got it in the doctor's words. Okay, okay. And I give it to my dad. Mm -hmm. I did get to talk to my mother. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I told her everything was fine. Mm -hmm. But then my dad turned everything over to my mother. My mother took it to my grandmother. Mm -hmm. My grandmother looked it up in the, in the books, told my mother exactly what was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a good thing I wasn't there. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but on the whole, I, my grandmother was a wonderful little lady. Sure. And when she when I when I came back home and she told me, mm -hmm. I said, Grandma, you got a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you uh, did you do or have something special for good luck? No, not really. I I carried the cross of of uh, Jesus on my. Yeah, I still carry it. Okay. It's around my neck. Okay. Um, and I trusted in the Lord. Okay. Mm. And. He answered the call. Yes. Yes, he did. That was my good luck. All righty. <laughs> All righty. Um, did you have plenty of supplies? I'm sorry? Did you have plenty of supplies? No. Okay. Many times we did not. Okay. Um, our supply depots were far and few between. Right. Um, the only supplies that I really got was gas and oil. Okay. Um, mm. If the tractor broke down, well, if you didn't have the parts to put it back together, you didn't get it. It just it. broke down. Mm. Um, you had to requisition and mm -hmm. maybe it came, maybe it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, if the tractor broke down, of course, I had another tractor to go on okay. or a piece of heavy equipment. Okay. Um, no, the supply depots were far and few between. Okay. Uh, mostly I was on detached duty. Okay. Um, going from one outfit to another. Okay. Uh, when I say this, I was, uh, I should report into the Second Army for an example, mm -hmm. or the Seventh Marines, or wherever they needed me. Mm -hmm. uh, my radio was right there. Okay. Um, I, made a couple of trips across the island okay. um, from one place to the other, um, detached duty all the way over okay. and all the way back. Like I said, I was either in front of the line or I was in back of it. Okay. Um, most of the time, uh, I believe I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I believe that the com my commanding officer knew where I was at. Mm -hmm. um, by communications, radio communications, mm -hmm. but by the time he got the message, I was somewhere else. Okay, okay, okay. So how was the food? What was the food like? Um, aboard ship, food was good. Okay. Um, C rations. We were given K rations at that time. What was called K rations. Mm -hmm. um, about the only thing I really ate, eat out of it was the uh, beans and uh, wieners. Okay. Uh, the rest of it, garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah just wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. Coffee, we made it by a dose, by the tin cup full, and mm -hmm. the tin cup held, the canteen cup held two cups. Okay. We'd boil our coffee and pour that soluble mm -hmm. coffee into it. Mm -hmm. I found out later that um, a, a lot of K rations that we got mm -hmm. was made and at Harm Walker's oh, distillery in really? Peoria. The whiskey place, huh? Yeah. How about that? Uh, that was quite interesting. It is. Um, 
So we're going on to R and R. How did you entertain yourself, or was there a chance for entertainment? Not much. Okay. Okay. Uh, sometimes we would um, dwell a lot of time on R and R. I wouldn't go very far off base. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the smell in the country was mm -hmm. just not pleasant. Okay. Okay. Um, did you did any entertain entertainers ever come to your unit? No. Okay. No. Okay. Um, uh, I say that with tongue in cheek because there was an outfit that came in. Mm -hmm. Well, I was 20 miles away from it. Um, I don't remember what the name of the outfit was. Okay. Okay. Um, a lot of people that were going on the front or back from the front, um, yeah, there was a lot of entertainment going on, but I never saw any okay. of it. Okay. Okay. I was never in a position to see it. Okay. Um, what did you do when went on leave? Just roamed. Roamed. Um, in Kobe, Japan. Uh, I went out to see what the culture was like. Mm -hmm. uh, although I had a previous knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wanted to really see how they... I call it the other half lives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the downtrodden. Mm -hmm. um, visit restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, I was a heavy drinker at the time, mm -hmm. um, but went into the bar rooms and got into a brawl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had. Then I went to restaurants and sampled the food. Mm -hmm. um, when I come out of the hospital, went R and R um, up to a place called Hamagotsu, Japan, mm -hmm. which was the first, first Marine Air, first Marine Japanese Marine base. That's what first Japanese Marine base. Okay. Okay. Um, a place called Hamaotsu, Japan, mm -hmm. and that's where the Fiji Island or the mountain is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I lived off base uh, two thirds of the time because I had a house uh, that I had a chance to buy. Wow! Wow! And uh, I bought the house mm -hmm. um, for fifteen dollars. My goodness! <laughs> At that time, the Japanese yen was a whole bushel basket full of money. Really? And <clears throat> I went to the Chase Manhattan Bank and mm -hmm. said, hey, fork it over. <laughs> $15, I got it all in yen. I paid the mama son and papa son, made an agreement with them mm -hmm. that they would, uh, they would be the owners while I was gone. Okay. I still pay a dollar and forty-seven cents a year in, in taxes oh to goodness. the Japanese government. Oh my! God. You still own the property? I, I still own the property. Amazing. The property was two blocks long. It was uh, two blocks um, north of the base, uh -huh. and I had a girl I lived with. I was going to marry her. MacArthur said no. He You're said not no. Do that. Okay. Um, and I build up the, I build up the practice. Mm -hmm. Let me shut this up. I eat the Japanese food. I had some of it when I was there before, mm -hmm. but I got to the point where I loved it because there were different dishes. Um, I never eat rice. Mm -hmm. uh, now, 
but uh, there is one type of rice that I will eat, and that's Japanese fried rice. Okay. And you can't hardly find that anywhere. No. Where Japanese people make mm. it. China, yeah, they got um, they got a rice that they call it fried rice, but mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't taste that. Okay. The okay. taste is not it's there. It's different, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. it sounds to me like you did travel while, while you were in the service. Oh, yes. Yes. I so. traveled a great, great deal. Yes. Okay. Um, I can just about go name. Okay, go ahead. East Coast, uh, New York, Boston, um, down into Miami, down into Newark, New Jersey, uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, Cincinnati, Ohio, Memphis, Tennessee, uh, then up to Chicago, back to Peoria, then went west mm -hmm. or south. I went south. Um, Texas. Spent a lot of time in Texas. Okay. Uh, one end to run into one incident at um, Denton, Texas, at the University of Texas. Um, I ran into Admiral sitting in the in the audience because one of the sons was graduating. Mm -hmm. and I was telling them I had written a speech and I sent it in to the Department of Defense and the Department of Defense sent one sentence back. The rest of it was all blocked out. Uh, well, we're going to talk the truth here. Mm -hmm. I tore the paper and I just let it fly. And I almost got a court martial over it. Wow. Um, but uh, you know what a PI is across the NSRB uh, book? Mm -mm. It's called Political Influence. Okay. It's in big red letters PI. Mm -hmm. What that actually means is don't touch this guy. Right. Okay. If you touch him, you're in deep trouble. Yes, sure. <laughs> and I've done what the Admiral wanted me to do, I, or Vice Admiral. Okay. Um, I've done what he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I got, I got to confined to the, to the hotel room. Mm -hmm. And after I was confined to the hotel room, I was interviewed. Um, tell them my story. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really irritated the people, according to the Vice Admiral, was that I said, if you let, there is all you people out here in this audience that are women, you let a bullet whistle around your butt and you'll soon find out that your son is there to protect you only because he had military training. Mm. Wow. <laughs> that got me out in the court martial. <laughs> <laughs> but from then on, I carried a PI against my SRB book. Okay. And I got involved in politics. Mm -hmm. And had quite a time since then. I, okay. I'm involved in so many it things. Like it. Uh, you know, I get up every morning and I think, now, what are we going to do today? today? Right. Wow. How many people am I going to see? Now, yeah. how, many, how, many, how many people are going to sit down and tell me how bad they are, how bad off they are? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and how can I help them? Yes. Um, most of them are homeless. Yes. And, uh, well, the only thing I can do at my age is go out and find out how the homeless live. Right. So right. I've done it. Wow. Wow. I lived under a bridge. Okay. I've only done it a short time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but I lived under a bridge. Mm -hmm. I slept out in the open. Mm -hmm. I slept alongside highways. Okay. Under bridges. Mm -hmm. Found out how they actually live. Mm -hmm. uh, and I still am still learning about it because mm -hmm. um, they got camps around the country right. that they go to. Right. Uh, some are drug related alcohol mostly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I tried to get them out of it. I tried to talk them out of it or refer them to someone services mm -hmm. even if it's picking up and trading them or, or taking them to uh, someone of, of knowledge that can help them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just recently I had a uh, van that was donated to my chapter mm -hmm. Um, and I put the DAV logo on it and mm -hmm. uh, put a lift in it. And I said, hey, I'm open for business, mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We take the wheelchair people mm -hmm. um, to the uh, Furia Clinic, mm -hmm. uh, drive them to Danville if, the, if they miss the bus. Or transport them, transport them from one uh, Walgreens to another so they could pick up their prescriptions. Okay. Um, and I talk, get a chance to talk to the wives. Yes. Uh, I get the chance to uh, find out their their living, their way of living. Mm -hmm. uh, a sense of people have come back from. Uh, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. Pakistan, mm -hmm. um, the Cold War. Mm -hmm. I have the opportunity to say, sit down and say, okay, now, fellas, this is what's available. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, most of the people are looking at mainly their mortgages. Mm -hmm. um, my chapter is not able to come up with the kind of monies that they need, mm -hmm. but we do help as many as we can. Sure. And since the economy has gone downhill, we're mm -hmm. not getting as much in contributions mm -hmm. as we were getting. Mm -hmm. uh, so therefore, we have to rely on a lot of other people mm -hmm. uh, to help our veterans out. Yes. So, and what disturbs me quite a lot mm -hmm. is that um, I stand out in a uniform and ask for money mm -hmm. for donations, mm -hmm. and they'll look at me and say, what's the DAV? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I have to tell them, hey, it's disabled American veterans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That disturbs me sure. because the name is not out like the BFW, right? Uh, like the Marine Corps League, right? Um, and all the monies that can, is contributed through our fundraising efforts all go to the local, mm -hmm. um, local veterans that are there in the area. Sure. Mm -hmm. And we take care of a few others as it's outside of the city. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, we, the DAV, uh, Chapter 1, the heart of Illinois, Chapter 1, 640 miles. Mm -hmm. Wow. In He's a large there. area. Mm -hmm. So that's where the van comes in handy. Mm -hmm. um, it started at 6 o'clock in the morning and lined up whatever time. Wow. But that's what keeps me young. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Do you have any photos that you would like to share and tell us about? Do you have any photos with you? Pictures? No. Photographs? Okay. All I was told about was that I'm going to be interviewed. Okay. Um, down here. And I was only notified of that yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Otherwise, oh. I would have brought a lot okay. of that stuff. Okay. Um, uh, do you recall the day your service ended? 
Okay. And Bob, this I think this might be getting ready to stop, and if so, I need to save it, and then we have to start again so that we can get the rest of this. Uh, nothing, ex nothing that's really special. Okay. All right. This is Bob Sutter. Um, born July 8, 1930, and I'm Gwen Harrison, and um, we're recording this at the Illinois State Library, and we're going to um, complete our interview. So I just asked Bob, um, did he recall the day the service ended, and he gave me an answer, and where were you? Uh, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, okay. when I was got out. Okay. Okay. Um, and I was interviewed by a, a major, and they wanted me to come back at the end of the service uh, in the Toys for Tots Foundation. I said, no, I want to leave. Okay. Okay. Um, did the war come to an end, or had you ful fulfilled your military service? I had fulfilled my military service by one year. Okay. I'm a COG to the federal government for one year. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I re upped it okay. when I went to the foundation. Okay. Um, coming out was no different. Uh, no big ceremonies or nothing else. I was just called into the office mm -hmm. and say, hey, you want to do or you don't. You will or you won't. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Give me my money and let me go home. Right. Um, I had already uh, secured a job. Um, I was quite fortunate in my uncles and some uncles. Mm -hmm. Uh, got a farm down here on it by Middletown, okay. or had a farm. Mm -hmm. um, we sold it two years ago. Had I, I and my two brothers, we had several concession stands going, mm -hmm. uh, and going to state fairs and county fairs. Okay. And primarily because I'm known, but my people people know me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we had a good business. Sounds like it. Sounds like it. Um, uh, were others discharged with you when you were discharged? Were others discharged with you? Uh, as far as I know, I've never had a discharge. Oh, okay. I all got right. a DD two fourteen, and oh. that's all I ever got. Okay. Um, Okay, so what did you do in the days and weeks afterwards? Did you uh, resume a job, or start a new career, go back to school? Did you use well, the GI Bill no. for education? <clears throat> no, I had a good job uh, in uh, having our own business. Mm -hmm. I and my brothers had a fish market right here in Springfield. A fish uh, market? A fish market. In Springfield. Mm -hmm. Where at? On 5th and Jefferson. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what was it called? Springfield Fish Market. Really? Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. That's where I cut my thumb off. Really? Right there. Cut the end of my thumb off because I was making uh, steaks. Uh huh. Catfish steaks. Uh huh. Huh. And I chopped the end of my thumb off. And I called my sister in law in and I said, hey, weigh that thumb up <laughs> <laughs> and charge him for it. <laughs> Okay. And my sister in law looked, looked at me, looked at my thumb, and fainted. <laughs> Get away. <laughs> I would have to. <laughs> they revived her, and I went to the hospital. Okay. To put a, <laughs> something on the end of my thumb okay. so I wouldn't bump it. Okay. But yeah, I owned the fish. We owned the fish market. There. What, when was that? What years were that? the late 50s. Okay. Hmm. I can't really tell you because dates kind of escaped me. I think you've done an excellent job. But I was, <clears throat> we had fish markets, 
I was still with toys for tots. Mm -hmm. I was still traveling with them. You're busy. Mm -hmm. And I have a place. I have a place in uh, called the Four Winds Motel in mm -hmm. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. Um, had concession stands running all over, all over the country. Um, then owned a uh, ice cream, soft ice cream shop. Wow. That's where I had a lot of fun. Wow. Well, you know, the rest of these questions you have already answered. You've talked about the close friendships you've had in service. Uh, you've talked about relationships that continued on. You talked about uh, Mr. Overton, you talked about, uh, you, you obviously are very active. Mm -hmm. um, you go to reunions. Um, you, you apparently, you have apparently joined a veterans organization, the DAV, and among other organizations. And um, so I've got a couple of more questions. How has your service and experiences affected your life? And two, did your military experience influence um, your thinking about war or military in general? Two different kinds of questions, and I can repeat those if you need me to. Has my life changed? Yes. No. It's changed drastically. Okay. My thought of war, mm -hmm. um, I was raised in war, in a war zone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so to speak. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, gang wars mm -hmm. between the Shelton gang and mm -hmm. the people that Al Capone. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Uh, wow. Had a lot of that. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, the war has changed me mm -hmm. for the better, I would say. Okay. Because I'm out. I'm out trying to protect everybody, and I'm just one guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add for this interview? I don't think so. Well, you've done an awesome job. I'd like to thank you for your time, and I'd like to thank you for serving our country. You're and uh, it has been a pleasure, uh, my pleasure, talking to you and learning so much. It's been eye-opening. It's been an eye-opening experience, and I, I'm just honored to have had the opportunity to meet you and talk to you and to hear Great. your story. It's, it's my been pleasure awesome. to know you, too. Yes. Even Thanks. though all you do is smile. Yeah, <laughs> and encourage you. You do have a pretty smile. She does. She does. One that says,